So nothing from homework? No. All right, just to remind you guys, the end of the semester is approaching very quickly. It's amazing. Next week, I don't know if you guys noticed this from the, uh, the homework sheet, but I'm giving us next Wednesday off because then it's Thanksgiving. Normally, people are heading out of town, right? Uh, so the reality of the situation is we, a lot of us live very far from home, like me, and we don't want to take the red eye uh, to get there on Thanksgiving. So uh, Wednesday, I give off, right? Because people that would show up, the people that don't show up aren't there because they're, they're evil students, right? They just want to go home and see their families with them. So Wednesday's off. Uh, Monday, I'll have the practice test because the actual test, the last test before the final, is that Wednesday, December 2nd, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. So Monday, I'll have the, the practice test. The following Monday will be review day. Cool. So today, what I want to do is uh, do section 12.5, because last time we did 12.4. It's amazing how that works. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> Monday, the nice thing is we... we we basically already did 12.6 and 12.7, so I just got to go back in and formalize it and, and show you the formulas for those. Uh, and I think that might be as far as we'll make it this semester, which is, which is fine. Right. You guys get a taste of some probability. So no questions before getting into new stuff? Yes? So we only have to do up to 12.6 one more? 12.7. 12.7? Yeah. I'm almost confident that that's as far as we'll make it. So we'll know for sure on next Monday. It's amazing, man. Every semester goes by faster. It's like, here's the syllabus and the final. What? What? All right, so let's get into 12.5. Um, let me see what you guys already know about some of this stuff. Um, sticking with the horses theme from last time, right? Been on the horses. If in race one, there were three horses running, let's say. There was a lot of horses that had to pull out. The jockeys were just not feeling well. They had a math test. Uh, three horses, we'll call them, let's not call them sea let's just call them sea muffin. Uh, they're horse A, horse B, horse C. Right? And then in race two, there's four horses, bless you. Uh, remarkably enough, they are horse D, E, F, G. Hopefully G doesn't stand for glue. Poor little horse. Aw, Jeff. So you're going to make a ticket. You're going to buy, uh, you're going to make place some bets. Place one bet on both races. So for example, you could bet A, D, right? So you're going to bet that A's, uh, horse A is going to win and horse D is going to win. Not going to get an all show and place and all that kind of bullshit. Just win. No super trifecta, whatever. I can tell how often I've got a horse. Um, how many total different combinations can you make? Exactly. How do you get that? Think about it. Why? Think about why it would be twelve. And you can see where twelve would come from. But why does it come from that? I don't know, Jeff. But here's so this section talks about one way to do it visually. It's called the tree diagram. So if you had to write all the possible uh, combinations, you might get lost in the middle somewhere. A tree diagram is one way to keep it straight. So what a tree diagram does is it has branches and then twigs and then so forth, right? Different branches coming off of those. The first set of branches is the first choice that you face. So your first choice, how many options do you have? How many choices are you going to make? No. You're going to buy one. You're going to place one bet on both races. So how many choices do you have? Two, right? How many options for the first choice? Three. Three. So you can pick the first, you know, the first race is A, B, or C. You with me? So the tree diagram is going to look like this. The first choice, you have A, B, C. 
Now, if I pick horse A, what could I pick for the second race? Any of them, right? So there's four options for choice A. There's four options for choice B. There's four options for choice C. And if you go back in time, that's how you were taught multiplication, right? There's like four apples in every crate, and there's three crates. So how many total apples are there? Twelve. So there's four options for each of these three options, so there's twelve total options. Does that make sense? So if there are M options in one thing, and N options, N options in another thing, you multiply them to see the total. So if there was a third race on my ticket, and it had A options, I would multiply by A, right? So if there were two horses in this third race, I'd multiply that by two, then now there's 24 options. Does anybody, anybody bet on the horses? I think I asked you guys that last time. Okay, it's probably for the best, <laughs> right? What little money we have, we want to hold on to, so we can pay back loans and such. Um, so off of here, off of A, what would I put off of A? D, E, F, G. And remarkably enough, off of B, D, E, F, G. And off of C, D, E, F, G. So then you can collect them all. So there could be A, D, A, E, A, F, A, G. B, D, B, E, so forth, right? You can just read them off. You can go down this path. So now it's a path. So you can also look at it as good old uh, Robert Frost walking down the road. And he's like, I can go that way, that way, that way, that way. That way looks overrun. Let me go that way, because nobody goes that way. Right? No poetry? No? Sure. Yeah. Good. All right. Road. Let's the road. Yeah, exactly. So you can to go down this road, and then this road. If you go down this road, you can go down that road, and so forth. This is uh, uh, like a total route at the end. Right? So these are all the possible outcomes. So let me just B, D, B, F. G, C, D, C, D, C, F, C, G. And of course, how many are there? <coughs> Twelve. That's crazy. All right. So you can see the multiplication in action. Right? Now, if all these were equally likely, which they most likely aren't, right? Some horse is going to be more likely to win than some other horse. Are you with me? But let's just say it's a weird-ass day and everything's equally likely. What's the probability that this is the winning combination? One out of 12. I like it. But, so that's if they're equally likely. That's how easy it is. And we've done problems sort of like this. We just didn't write out the entire sample space. This is called a sample space. All of this. The sample space is just everything that could possibly happen. All right, cool. I like it. So it's most likely not... Uh, equally likely. So I can't just say it's 1 out of 12. We have to come up with a way to figure it out. All right. How are we doing so far? So a tree diagram helps you organize what could happen, and then at the end you could say all the things that could possibly happen total. Okay, I like it. And that, that's all there is really to tree diagrams. It's crazy. Um, so where things get interesting is what if... So let's go back to... Uh, Go back to our poker chips in a bag or a little overused uh, device here. <laughs> uh, say one green. So it's four red, six blue, and one green poker chip in a bag. Okay. And I'm going to pick two poker chips. So a really good question would be. The immediate, your brain goes to a certain situation. If I'm going to pick two, you probably think I'm going to reach in and pick two at one time. Right? <laughs> Which means that would be a situation where I call it without replacement. So let's do this one at a time. Let's be careful. So if I do it in such a way that I pick one, and I look at what it is, and then I drop it back in, shake it up, and I pick another one. That's called with replacement because I replaced the first one. Is that so far so good? You're going to see these phrases in the homework and on my test. So, if we do this with replacement, pick two poker chips. What would the tr diagram, the tree diagram, what would it look like? So, I'm picking two poker chips. So, how many, uh, we'll, we'll call it the official name, how many trials? How many times am I going to do that? How many? So, like, there are two races there, so there are two trials. Here there's two trials and picking a poker chip, so there's a, there's a array of things that could happen. 
and then I'm going to pick another poker chip. Right. So what could happen on the first trial? Red. Red. Blue, green. Now see, the numbers don't come into play. So the tree diagram doesn't give a shit about how many there are. It just cares you can get a red. And what's the most likely thing to get? Blue. The probabilities, or the odds, or the odds, the probabilities care about how many blue there are. The tree diagram just cares that there's some blue in there. You guys kind of with me? I'll show you when we do without replacement, suddenly the tree diagram is going to care, and you'll see why. So if I pick a red, I put it back in. If I pick a blue, I put it back in. If I pick a green, I put it back in. And then I pick the next one. So what could happen on the next one if I get a red? Red, blue, green. Red, blue, green. Red, blue, green. All right. So that's exciting. So I give you guys a minute just to calm down. All right. So maybe less than a minute. And then, again, you could make the sample space red, red. Red, blue, red, green, red, wrong. Blue, red, <laughs> so forth. Is that is that cool? Are these all equally likely? Why not? We just basically said why not, right? What was, what was the most likely? What would be the most likely thing to happen in this big list? Yeah, there's most of it's blue, so blue, blue would be the most likely. So if I ask you, we can actually calculate. We'll do it right now. I'll remind you guys how to do this. Well. Might be a little evil. I'm not going to do that yet. But if I ask you what's the probability that you get blue, red, you can't really calculate it yet. You don't know how to do it. They're not equal. Like, so I can't just say one out of, and of course, how many are there? Nine, because there's three options in first and three options in second. So there's nine total. All right. So far, so good. This is nothing evil. It'll make it evil. Uh, so what if I do this without replacement? What's the, what's the part that's going to change? If I do this without putting the first chip back. The second one is going to be 10. The second pull is going to be 10 out of 10. Right. How do you mean? So the first pull is out of 11 chips. The second pull is going to be out of 10. So you're getting a little too far ahead of me. So that you're getting to the probabilities of it. Right. Uh, I just want to know how the tree is going to look different. So this, has no, this doesn't care about the numbers except for the fact that which one of these chips is going to be in trouble if I pick it. Uh, if I pick green and feed it to my little brother, then the only everything's going to be the same except off of here, this branch won't be there. How we do? I lock it. So then, if it's without replacement, I can't just do three times three. I got to think about well, which one of these are going to suffer if it's without replacement. Does that make sense? So then, three times three is nine. If I do it with replacement, that's what it is. But of course, how many outcomes are there? I'd have to cross this one out. So now, amazingly enough, there's eight. All right, Alec. Cool. So that's what the tree diagram cares about. Uh, when we officially get into twelve seven. We'll talk about what the probability would look at. Right? But let 12.5 be this simple. Uh, hopefully I didn't assign anything. I just think in probability classes where you made a tree, you had to turn your paper this way. which was just, oh my god, oh my god. And you make it all these branches. I don't think I did that to you. Hopefully not. You'll find out. Uh, let's see if there's anything else freaky in here. Oh, did they do that already? Oh, those crazy people. All right, we'll do that. Yeah, let's look at this. We'll put it in here. Uh, so let's stick with replacement, all right? Let's stick with replacement. We'll leave the green in there. Looks that cool? So let's, let's do this. This is the... Uh, I'll show you this method. I Well, we'll I'll show you this method. I won't say anything about it. Uh, so what is the probability that I get a red poker chip first? Yeah, 4 out of 11. Cool. That's the probability of 4 out of 11. Blue? 6 out of 11. Green? 1 out of 11. 1 out of 11. So, what's the probability of getting a red on the second? And remember, I put in the first one back in. So, like you said earlier, nothing changed, right? I put it back in. It's all the same. It's kind of reset. So, what's the probability of getting a red on the second one? 4 out of 11. 4 out of 11 still. 
right? So now watch this. It's kind of cool. And of course, this would be 6 out of 11. And this will be 1 out of 11. Get out of there, circle. Make it, yeah. And then say blah, 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 right? All the way down. So now think about what this means. 4 out of 11 of the time, 4 out of 11, well, what's 4 divided by 11? Let's make it a percentage so I can say this better. 4 divided by 11. Alright, cool. So I'll call it 36 repeating percent. Is that cool? I'll say 36 repeating percent. So let me just say about 36% of the time I'll get a red. And about 36% of the time I'll have gotten a red before. So 36% of the 36% of the time I'll get two reds. Let me say that again. 36% of the time I'll get a red, right? So 36% of those times, I'll get a second red. So overall, how do I figure out the probability that I'm getting two reds? What would I do with those? What do you think? 36% of 36%. Multiply, right? And, and the silly example I give my students uh, in statistics is, go with me for a second, just to explain why you multiply. Uh, two, two silly examples. We'll do the first one. So let's say I want to join a fraternity. Okay, keep an eye on the clock. Uh, and they do a light hazing, nothing crazy that's going to get in the news. Uh, so I got to walk down this hallway, and every fifth step they'll slap me on that cheek. Somebody, somebody has to come out snappy. And every ninth step they'll slap me on that cheek, right? So how often? So one fifth of the time that cheek's getting it, and one ninth of the time that cheek's getting it, right? You guys with me so far? So it's sort of like the probability that this cheek will get it. So how often will I get hit on both cheeks? Bam, like that, right? How often will that happen? You can do it. Every fifth step, bam. Every ninth step, bam. So when will they match? 45 times. So one-fifth of one-ninth is one-forty-fifth. Right? So there's a, there's a silly example of why you multiply. You with me so far? Uh, another example is not really silly, but uh, if you live in a bad part of town, I don't know why I'm drawing a door. There's a door knob. If you live in a bright part of town, what are you going to have, probably? Crime. So what are you going to have on your door? Locks. Right? Lots and lots of locks. So, lock, 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 lock. Uh, so, if I added probabilities, that would so desperately suck. So, uh, I want it to be harder for a burglar to get in. Let's say there's a 1% uh, chance a burglar can pick through a lock. So, if I have one lock, there's a 1% chance that burglar is getting in my house. Right? So one out of a hundred times, if I'm in a bad neighborhood, I could have a hundred people try to break my house at one, at one night. So that's not good enough. I need better odds for myself. So let's say I put another lock on the door. If you add probabilities when you uh, do multiple things, that's, now they got a 2% chance to get in. No, 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 that's no good. That doesn't make any damn sense. It should be a better chance for them to get in if I put another lock. So the idea is 1% of the time they'll pick that first lock, and 1% of those times, they'll also pick the second lock. And of course, we talked about this earlier, of is multiplying. So what's that become? Beautiful. It'd be 0 .001, so 0.01%. That's much better. That's one out of what? Yeah, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. It's one out of ten thousand chance. That's much better, right? So that would be, uh, on average, if ten thousand people try to break in my house, one of them would make it, right? On average. You with me? So those are much better. You put a third one on there, bless you, and it's going to get even harder for that to happen. Uh, and there's a, a third. You guys are like, that's enough, Jeff. Do you guys remember... Uh, this is going to be weird the way I said this sentence because you don't remember that I used to go see the, ch the Challenger, the shuttle, the space shuttle takeoff. But when I was in Florida, I was a little kid, fourth grade, we would go out and watch the space shuttle takeoff. It was in 86, I was in a fourth grade, I was like, 86, the shuttle, of course, blew up. So and for some reason, we didn't go out there. And I was a huge space geek, so when I found that, I was all crying. But uh, what, does anybody remember or know why the shuttle blew up? <laughs> Say again? Isn't there like ice on it? Or? There was ice. Yeah. 
So it increased the chances of something. So there's these O-rings that were like valves for the fuel that only let the fuel go in one direction. And since it iced up, the probabilities that they would fail increased, right? So they had several, just like people have several locks on their doors for the same reason. They wanted a backup. So if one of them failed, the other one was still there saying, no, no, no. But it was icy, so they all went, yeah, sure, what the hell? And the fuel came back and it ignited because it went the wrong way, hit the stuff with his back. Uh, so the same reason they have several O-rings is each O-ring would hopefully have like a 0.001% chance of failing normally. So altogether, this, this is really like not fail, not, not like a 100% chance of success, but 99.99, like crazy chance of success. The, the mistake they made, they, so they were really confident. They've done it before. We know how to do this stuff. But, and then it was icy though, so they should have thought about it, they should have recalculated the probabilities and holy shit, let's wait. Because now all the O-rings were uh, iced up, so they weren't operating correctly, right? Therefore, the probabilities went way up, and then it happened. Okay, so that's another example. They have contingency plans, right? You have multiple things in place in case one of them fails. Like having multiple alarm clocks on the day of the final or something. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. You do your alarm clock and your phone, and you had to tell your mom, hey, call me, right? And then nothing, nothing, none of that happens, and you try to explain that to me. <laughs> all right, so hopefully all that together makes sense. Um, so here, coming back here, you can see that blue, blue would be the highest probability because it would be, uh, what would it be? Blue, blue. So it would be 6 out of 11 times... 6 out of 11. And what's 6 out of 11 times 6 out of 11? I like it. What is that? 3, 10, that's like 30%. 0.3? 0.294. Is that what you're doing? 0.297? Ah, I might as well lose my chance. <laughs> 297. I know. You're off by 0 0.003, man. Slipping. Um, so it, would you say that 30% is a large probability? I mean, in general, if I just said there's a 30% chance that this is going to happen, would you go, oh man, it's going to, no, but that's the highest probability. And of course, but of course there's like, there's nine things that could happen, right? So you spread all our probability out and the most likely thing is still not like a huge probability. That's the thing that throws people off. There are, uh, so if I flip, uh, oh, there's some homework. I think you had to flip a coin 50 times. Some of you guys have done it? Or some of you guys made something up? And trust me, I'm probably, I can tell if you make it up. There's ways to tell. So just do it. Uh, so if you flip a coin 50 times, the one thing I don't really expect to happen is the most likely thing, which is kind of counterintuitive. What's the most likely thing to happen? 25 and 25. So well, why would I say that I don't expect to see that? And it doesn't mean it's, you know, that you didn't do it honestly. It just means I, that, that's why I wrote what I did. It's why it freaked me out. Because here's the thing. Even though that's 30%, that means what's probably something else is going to happen? 70% chance. You guys kind of with me? And that's why people make mistakes about the lottery. Uh, anybody play like the lottery ever? Picking the numbers? You're like, I'm not going to tell you, Jeff. <laughs> when I played the lottery before, and I know the odds, right? Just because, who knows? Um, so if you had to pick four numbers for a lottery, would you ever pick one, two, three, four? No. Of course you wouldn't. But then you, if you stop and realize what you just said to yourself, then you should not play. Because if one, two, three, four is not going to happen, then nothing's going to freaking happen. Right? It's just going to be the old guy that played once. And it's like, oh, I just got hit a Bob one ticket for the first time. Screw you. Right. So the mistake people are making is their brain says it's much more likely to be not one, two, three, four. So if we pick not one, two, three, four, we have a better chance. But if you only pick one other, if you pick three, five, two, nine, your brain goes, yeah, 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 that's not one, two, three, four. But it's exactly the same probability as one, two, three, four in it. Right? So if you would never play one, two, three, four, then you should not expect to win the lottery ever because every choice you make is the exact same probability, right? 
So that's the kind of thing that our brain is not hardwired to understand probability. That's the stuff it goes through. Okay. So let me see. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, real quick. Um, I know I just erased it, but what's the probability if, uh, if I do it without replacement on that last problem? What's well, probably get green, green? Zero, right? Because you can't get too green. And that's because that last leg was missing, right? We had to erase it if I did it without replacement. I picked the green, feed it to my little brother. Get me right. <laughs> and then there's no chance I can get it in the green. So the green, green is out. Sounds like it was that gang group, but I'm not. Uh, okay, so let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, that's one little tiny thing that's kind of silly. Um, so this is what I was just saying, really. The the blue blue was 0.297, right? Mm -hmm. So let me see if they use the same symbol I'm used to. Oh, they don't use a symbol, so I'll show you what symbol I'm going to use. Here's the probability of not that. Just put a line over. That means not blue blue. So what's the probability that I get something that's not blue blue? Why is that a quick? If the probability is going to rain today was 10%, what's probably is not going to rain? See how quick that was? So the probability is that blue blue is 0.297. What's probably is not blue blue? Yeah, you're going to take this and you're going to subtract it from? 0.703. One, yeah. And watch, real quick, uh, the shortcut for subtracting from one. I know you guys are like, the calculator. No. Make them all nine, except the last one, make it 10. What, what makes two nine? Seven. What makes nine nine? What makes seven and 10? Bam! I like it. Right, so you can subtract any decimal from one very quickly. Maybe even quicker than you can type in your calculator. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay. Cool. So 12.5 is all about tree diagrams. 12.6 is the or and the and uh, probabilities, right? We've already kind of discussed that a little bit. And then 12.7 is the given. Where we talked a little bit about the given probability. That's called conditional probability. 12.7. So we'll do those on Monday. But I, I've got to go evaluate a teacher, so that's why i got to leave a little early today. Last time I just want to leave early just because.